All right, uh, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to How to Be a Superhero, the show. I'm Michael Tomano, author of How to Be a Superhero, the book. And today I have Christopher Galloway. And uh, um, I'm really excited to have him today. He's an awesome human being. Um, and so Chris, uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so I am currently a new and appointed superintendent in a small rural East Texas district called DeKalb, um, which is close to Texarkana. So we're real close to the Arkansas and Oklahoma borders here in Texas. That's um, a new position for me. I moved up from the San Antonio area. So I'm going from a metropolitan city of about two and a half million to a really small rural town of about 1600 people. I'm in education. Uh, obviously, I've been in education for about 13 years. My wife, uh, who I've been with for almost a decade, it's been nine years. Um, we've been together, we've been married for five. She's also an educator. Uh, I have two beautiful kids. Uh, my daughter, Gabriella, uh, is 19 and she's uh, about to be 20. She's a sophomore in college at St. Mary's University. And my son is a junior um, and he's still in the San Antonio area, but he's a, in the band and plays basketball. I have great kids. I uh, have a wonderful uh, dog named Rocky. Um, he's a standard size poodle. Um, and then I have a, a cat named Scooter. So I got pets and, and all the fun stuff. And, and, and I really enjoy my job as, as an educator. That's awesome. I, I love how you included all the family members, including the furry ones. Absolutely. I mean, I do think that, you know, I, with the title of this show, you know, you know, about superheroes, I, I think that, and I, you mentioned in your book about Batman, who happens to be one of my favorite superheroes, that not every superhero can do it alone. And so that's why you need a support system. And my family, by far, is my biggest support system. And they are the reason why I am the superhero I am, at least a big part of it. Yeah, uh, even even Batman, he, he had a lot of supporting cast with Alfred and Commissioner Gordon and, you know, eventually Robin and Batgirl and, and all that. Uh, so it was really important. Like he, he definitely was in some binds that he needed some help with. Absolutely. Yeah. I think everybody needs a, a support system. And uh, sometimes I think, you know, if you're talking about, you know, strengths of superheroes or what, what their power is, I think being vulnerable enough to ask for help is, is one of the most important pieces and, and admitting when you're wrong or you made a mistake and, and being able to have someone help you work through that process. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I find that asking for help too can be one of the quickest ways to, you know, to solve your, your problems instead of, because I'm, I'm a little bit, I'll freely admit, a little bit stubborn and, and hard-headed when it comes to solving a problem or facing <laughs> a challenge. Like sometimes I, I want to do it by myself. And, um, but I find that it's so much faster if, if, I, if I just ask someone for help. And especially like if, if, if the person knows that I've really been trying, then, um, you know, then they're really willing to help versus if, if I haven't been trying at all, if, I, if I'm just like, you know, can you just like do this for me or, you know, solve a kind of way, then they're not as likely, but, um, but people like to help, like, especially if, if they see you trying. I agree 100%. And I think that one of the misconceptions of asking for help is, is that it's a weakness. Uh, in reality, it's a strength. And, you know, I approach my work life that way. And even my personal life, I, I tap into friends and I call them, ask for their opinions or at work. You know, I have a team of people who are amazing that we work together. And I have a, a mentor of mine who is a principal um, in one of the largest high schools in, in Texas. And uh, something that sticks in my head is he he always used to say that if you're the smartest person in the room, it's time to find another room because you, you need people that can push you and, and help you grow as a human being, as an individual, and as a professional. That really reminds me of, of the quote that has me thinking. Um, and apparently I really like quotes uh, as I'm finding in these, in these interviews. <laughs> I do too. Um, that, that essentially you're, you're the average of the five people that you spend yes. uh, the most time with. And um, I, I think there's, I think there's at least some truth to that. And, and it makes sense. And it's, you know, are, are the people that you're surrounding yourself with pulling up your average or, or lowering it? Yep. Yep. Only quality people. The o OQP is something I've heard before. And um, that that's Les Brown. He's, you know, I, I'll tap into a lot of people um, that are experts and have, have kind of paved the way for leadership and, and, and life and experiences. And he's one of them. And he talks about OQP, which is only quality people. And 
Um, I've also heard, heard another variation to that as well is it's not only the people, but the books you read as well. So the books you read and is what drives who you are because each of us, we take a little piece of that. Um, and I know that your book is focused on students. Um, I think that's what's so important because what they watch and who they hang out with and um, who they bring into their lives, they eventually will become those people or those things that influence them. I don't think we realize how much we're influenced by outside um, things. Yeah, what is the uh, idea? I think it's that the quality of your, of your thoughts you know, affect the, the quality of your life or, or determine yeah. the quality of, of your life. And, yes. you know, that's really determined too about like what you read, like really what you're, what you're mm -hmm. surrounding yourself around in, in a day-to-day -day basis. And um, for me, it, it's important to make clear too that I, you know, I really like helping people. And I think it's important to help people that, you know, maybe are, you know, w would potentially lower our average. But what, what I've learned is that, you know, you you can't really um, you can't really help them unless they're interested in helping themselves. And so mm -hmm. what I've what I've learned to do is instead of spending a lot of time trying to help them, to point them to resources or even create resources for mm -hmm. them so they can check it out. And if they actually check out those resources, um, you know, then we can take the next step. And you know that way I save you know a significant amount of time and you know headache. And they also if they want to you know, work on themselves, like, you know, they have the, the information to do so to, to at least get started. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think that, you know, we waste a lot of energy trying to, like you said, solve problems. Um, but, you know, not only reaching out to people, but we have such, you know, resources at our hands with our, our smartphones, that YouTube is full of, of videos and short clips. And, and I will do the same thing. I'll send my team, you know, a short two to five minute clip is something that speaks to me. Um, in fact, we do every meeting, we start with good things and talk about good things going in our lives to build relationships. But then at end of every meeting we do a you know kind of like a launch and and something that's motivational and so each team member picks what that might be and and shares it and it can be any way thing from a tiktok video to a youtube video it can be a poem something you know an excerpt from a book but we we try to tap into those other resources because there's nothing in the world that hasn't been done already by somebody it's just finding it and you know it's, it's rare that you see something new but it's important to tap into those resources and sometimes you know people need to hear something from somebody else you know it's not necessarily what you bring to the table but you know showing you know a, an expert in another field or somebody who's gone that way before that that's doing it and being successful i love that how you um essentially combined the superpowers and uh you know knowledge of of your group to to, to all benefit and one thing that i want to say too about the asking for help and this is something that i've i've really learned especially for my book um is that when you try to do everything your own you know, on your own, you're, you're only really able to see one perspective. And it's usually like a pretty small perspective. But when you have a lot of people, a lot of people's opinions and, you know, ability to see different angles, you know, you're, you're just able to have such a more complete picture. And, you know, things that I might see, you know, you might not see and things that I wouldn't see, you might see. And so like, combining just makes things infinitely better. And, uh, I really like the, the idea of, you know, let's say like, like we're all in darkness. Like if it's just me, you know, I have my flashlight and it's just pointing, you know, it just, it's, it's only illuminating like a very small percentage, but you know, you get a few of us, you know, all going back to back to back, you know, and we can light up everything, you know, illuminate, you know, the whole area. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that too. And, and I think that, you know, I'm going to back to some of my former mentors, you know, taking from them things is, you know, they always hired people that they felt were smarter than them. And, you know, not being afraid to do that. I think sometimes we get caught up in, you know, well, if I hire this person who might be more productive than me or smarter than me, it's going to, you know, push me out of the job or out of a situation or I'll lose that leadership role. But I firmly believe in the fact of, of helping people grow and, and helping them find their full potential. Um, and by hiring people that are, you know, smarter than you or more experienced than you, you're going to learn from them and they're, you're going to grow as an individual too. And you kind of get the credit as a leader, you know, we get the credit for all the good things and we definitely have to accept responsibility for the bad things. 
but as a as a as a hero or a leader, you you need to give credit to those people that helped you get there. And so you don't accept the the positive things, you know, and, and you push that onto your people. But the negative stuff, it's all on you, and you got to accept that. But I think that it's important for people to not be afraid to help other people. And you know, the fear is, well, if they're so good, they're going to leave one day. Well, that might be possible, but what what impact are they going to have on you, or what impact are they going to have on your organization? I, I call it the Michael Jordan theory in the sense of, you know, if you are a basketball coach and you could have Michael Jordan on your team for one year why wouldn't you take that because he's going to make your team so much better in that year and those 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 positive impacts will carry on for further years so you know i'm always looking for the people who are who are looking to to are hungry and want to do great things and um, are even smarter than me because that's going to make me a better person and in the long run and have a more of an impact on the organization and the people around me so yeah and so even if you did have michael jordan on for only a year, I'm sure you'd you would learn a lot from him. Absolutely. Yeah, you you really got me thinking too about how uh, well. So I I've led a bunch of of game design teams, and um, you know oftentimes I was not the best at you know a, a particular area, and so that's why it was it was so helpful to have have my team because I would have people that were really really good at, at a particular job, and you know that they, they would. They would fill those roles and I would do my stuff as project manager and just, you know, let them do their, their stuff. I would do my stuff. And, um, it, and I think just allowing people to, you know, fill those roles and do what they do best. Um, I think it really helps a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the, the key piece of leadership. Um, I'll mention another name, Simon Sinek. I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek. And um, he wrote Start With Why and Leaders Eat Last. And I think that, you know, what stands out to me is he talks about that, you know, when you move into like a management project management role or leadership role, we tend to fall back into what we're comfortable with, which is what we did before and what, what helped us get to that position. But our jobs as leaders is to take care of the people in our charge and therefore identifying their strengths, um, helping them grow in their weaknesses. Um, and for the organization as a whole, it's, it's almost like a cog in a wheel. You got to make sure that that everybody knows their part. And when you got the best person doing a certain thing, you got to help them get there and, and put them in that place and, and let them go. You don't want to assign them something that, that's a weakness because then that's going to hurt the organization as a whole. Yeah, I, I, I think you summed that up very nicely. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So I have one burning question that I've always wanted to ask a superintendent, or as on the Simpsons, Ralph would say, a super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> that was that was always like my one of my favorite uh, Simpsons joke. Um, but uh, so my question is, what does a superintendent do? And what is a day in the life like for a superintendent? Well, I'm only speaking from 60 days of experience so far, so uh, I'll try to to speak from that perspective. It, that's 60 days more than more than me. <laughs> I, I would say the the biggest um, the biggest responsibilities of the superintendent, a, a large part of the job is is almost like a politician. It's a lot of um, speaking and talking to people. Uh, it's a lot of coaching. Um, you know, it's when you're a teacher, you make a million and one decisions a day in a classroom that have an impact on kids and, and their lives. As a, as a principal, you make maybe, you know, a hundred in a week that, that impact kids and teachers. Uh, as a superintendent, you may make only one or two big decisions in a week, but those decisions are so big. They have a, a ripple effect that impacts not only the district, but it impacts the community. So, you know, so far in this new role, I've been spending a lot of time having conversations with community members, um, chief of, of the fire chief in the, in the county, um, talking to the mayor, um, talking to community members, um, my board, you know, I have seven bosses. So that's a different experience in itself and, and learning how to navigate that. And then, you know, the new pe the people I have is, is helping my principals um, and the, my team who work, work under me um, come together and collaborate and, and figure out what's best for the district and best for teachers and doing a lot of coaching in that aspect. And, and I have to look for the professional development that, that they need to grow. 
And so really, I'm going to say 70% of the job is being visible and, and having conversations. It's a lot of talking, um, a lot of meetings, but there's so much that happens in that time frame and, and so much that happens that has a positive impact on, on education in the community. Um, but, you know, I know I was, when I was a principal, I always wondered, what does the superintendent do? You know, they're always just at central office. They come into the events at football games and this and that, and then they're gone. Um, but there are so many aspects that come into play that you don't even realize, you know, where, whether it's a critical incident, and I've had a few already since I've been in this role, um, to dealing with COVID and how we're going to ensure that our students are safe and, and our staff is safe and at the same time keep them in the classroom, and then how we navigate the political ramifications from the, the, the governor to the um, education department on um, the requirements we have to report and what we have to do to ensure we get our attendance and our funding. So, um, and then at the same time, you know, my background is curriculum and I'm, I feel like that, that I'm a huge strength of mine. What's not my background is construction and budget, but now, you know, we're, we're gonna be putting in a, a new turf at our, um, in, on our football field, which is a huge project. And we're gonna be building a band hall um, and administrative offices at the middle school. And then I have facilities issues where schools flood when it rains. And we just had a big rain um, this past week. And so being able to navigate those projects and know what's legal on who I hire and who I don't hire, getting the attorneys involved in that. So a lot of talking to attorneys lately. Uh, so it's a been it's been an experience, but um, it's been fun. I mean, this is definitely my dream job. This is something I worked really hard to get to, and I'm excited to be here, so. That's really cool. It, it almost reminds me of, you know, like a, a parent of a really large family, you know, like having to take the kids like to, to the different doctor appointments and dentist appointments yeah. and, you know, making sure, you know, people get to, to soccer practice, you know, just like just having to, to take care of a lot of bases and, and make sure lots of things are, are set and in, in motion. Yeah, you know, that is probably the best analogy I've ever heard. And we call ourselves, um, we're the bears, the decap bears, but we call ourselves a bear family. And, and we truly are a family. And in that aspect, as the parent of that organization, you know, we work together um, to accomplish tasks. But sometimes there's those times where you have, to have really difficult conversations and you almost have to discipline your child, if that makes sense. And I hate to equate an adult to a child, but essentially, you know, if you treat them like you would your own kids, um, then they're going to be fantastic employees for you. And they're going to, and whether you have to discipline them or not, you know, they're going to see that you care about them and, and you have to have empathy in that and understanding at the same time. So this is something that's actually been brought up before, and uh, it's something that I, I, I've been exploring. But um, I, I think psychologically, we really are actually still kids with just a bigger body. And it, and you know, sometimes like the idea of, of treating someone like a child like sounds bad, but like really, if you're, if you're good to your kids, then it's really more the idea of, of being loving and caring and, and nurturing, um, you know, versus something like condescending. Cause I know for me, like working with kids, you know, I, I, I basically, I talk to them at, at the same level that I would an adult, you know, I, of course, certain subjects he wouldn't bring up, but, you know, giving them that same respect and uh, cause kids are smart too. So, um, yeah, I, I yeah. think that's great. And I, I agree with you, like just taking, taking someone under your wing and showing them that you care about their success. Um, that goes a really long way, I think. Yeah, 100% agree. And for me, yeah, I came to education late. I served in the military before, and then I worked in leadership roles and businesses and organizations. And where I really grew as a leader and as a human being is once I became a teacher and I saw the different types of students um, that were in those classrooms. And many times also talking to their parents who you start to see the care, you know, those characteristics in the child that's in, that comes from the, the parent and understanding, you know, that, like you said, adults really are 
big kids. And when you approach it that way, you understand that if you have a, a poor performance in an employee, most of the time it's not because they are doing it on purpose or because they're, you know, being negligible to what their duties and roles are. It's that they don't understand like a kid and they're afraid to ask. We just talked about that earlier and, and it takes a lot to ask for help and, you know, the fear of weakness. And so when I started approaching it, like you said, and I see everybody is just like a big kid that I'm there to support and help. Um, that really helped me tremendously in my leadership roles. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. It, one thing that, that I realized too is that um, just like you were saying, like sometimes they don't understand. And for adults, it can be even harder because, uh, you know, kids, they're, they're a lot more free. And, you know, usually if they don't understand something, you know, it, it, they're, they're able to ask. Whereas adults, you know, they get embarrassed and ashamed. And so I find that, well, so one thing that I found that has been really interesting is that when I ask kids, you know, what their superpowers are, they're usually really quick to answer. And when I ask adults, yeah. sometimes what their superpowers are, sadly, like this is like heartbreaking to me. Um, you know, they, they don't know. And sometimes, you know, they say that they don't have any superpowers and it's like, it's just something that you're, that you're good at. And they, you know, it's still, you know, it's, it's, they, they can't think of anything. And um, I think that's like, I think that's so heartbreaking, but <laughs> thankfully, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at seeing other people's superpowers. And uh, so I can name what I think their superpowers are. And it kind of like, is like a light bulb, like Eureka moment, like, well, yeah. actually do have something. <laughs> well, I think I thought about that a lot because I noticed that too. And I, and I think that I'm lucky compared to your other guests because I got to watch them and, and the experience they went through with you on these, these show, the show and, and got to think about it. And, and I thought about it. I think that we, are, we learn from a very young age to be humble, right? And I think that when you mention a superpower, it, it's almost like you're not being humble in a sense. Um, it's like talking about yourself. And uh, I think that's hard for people to do. And it, it, I thought about it. It was hard for me to come up with it and think about it. Um, so I'm definitely excited to hear about what you think my my superpowers are. And, <laughs> we met in a very unique way, and, and I'd like to see, you know, what you think. So that's interesting about, about uh, the humble. Um, my experience is that it's sadly usually been from another reason and that is basically conditioned to think that they don't have worth um mm -hmm. but that's i mean that's that's been a lot of the kids that i've worked with and you know just sometimes see some of the, the adults that i've encountered and um and that to me is really sad because um actually by by and large that's usually you know it's it's a large group of people that have sadly you know not been raised with with parents who um you know showed them love you know or, or show them they actually have real value mm -hmm. and um so that's that's really actually why a big part like the show is like a really big important thing to me because i really want everyone to realize that they do actually have super, real life superpowers or, or or something you know special um special about themselves that they can use to help other people um but, you know, and then also too, you, you just have, you do have people that do realize that they have superpowers, but not, but might not realize all the array of superpowers that they have, which is, which is fun too. That's a great point. And, and I'll tell you that for me, uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in that our superpowers, um, they come out of mistakes. They come out of um, those, those hard times growing up. Um, setbacks i think that's where the superpowers really come from so you know reading about like leaders like lincoln you know lincoln there's a book on lincoln on leadership that we're doing the book study at work and you know it, the the author talks about at the beginning of the book all these leaders who have gone through tragedy where they lost their parents um similar to batman lost all his parents you know and or they've gone through you know abusive homes or they've gone through you know alcoholic or drug addict parents and they turn out to be these superheroes and they get these superpowers but i think it comes from the tenacity to to a forgive your past and move forward it's not going looking backwards 
and just learning to grow as a human and tapping into that pain um, to help others. I think the most empathetic people I've ever met have gone through so much tragedy in their life, but that's because they've experienced so much. They know what it's like to be hungry or they know what it's like to be bullied or they know what it's like to um, lose a parent or, or something along those lines. So um, I would agree with what you, you your assessment. And, and I think that those kids and those people, they don't realize it, but they have so much to give the world. Yeah, one uh, one thing that's been really important to me is so my my childhood was a was a little bit rough, and mm-hmm. uh, you know had had some rough patches, and so it was always really important to me, um, to, uh, try to ha- help people in a way so that they wouldn't have to go through or feel the way that I felt, and um, you made me think that um, you know that's that's really a, kind of a common theme with with a lot of the superheroes where they've, they face some kind of tragedy and, and they don't want other people to have to experience that tragedy. And I was thinking that's actually a lot like Batman or, or maybe exactly like Batman where you know, his, his parents got murdered and he didn't want other people to have to deal with those kind of situations. And so that's why he decided to become a, a superhero. Uh, maybe he became a superhero for other reasons, but I would think that that would be a large part of his, of his motivation yeah, I agree 100 percent. And, and, you know, one of the things that drives me um, is a my kids and my family. That, that's probably the biggest piece. But the one thing I do almost almost on a daily, not every day, but almost a daily is I ask myself, what is my legacy going to be? You know, what what is it that I'm going to do today that's going to make a difference so that when I've left this world and I've moved on, you know, I'm not just, you know, another tombstone in, in the graveyard. And, and it's not because I want to be famous. It's because, you know, sometimes that comes along with it, but, you know, those things come because you've done so much to have that impact. You know, I always hear people say, you know, I don't want to be principal of the year. I don't want to be teacher of the year. I don't want to be superintendent of the year, whatever it might be, or employee of the month. But when you are recognized for that, it's because of all the good you've done. And that's the celebration piece. So what impact did you have on people to get them there? And then I, in turn, want to help those people that I help become those things. And they may not want it necessarily, but, you know, it's a legacy that they leave behind. And, um, you know, there's another person, um, you know, Ed Milet is a a big speaker, motivational speaker, and he talks about, and so does Les Brown, it's the exact same thing, that when you look at a graveyard, it's just a a bunch of uh, hopes and dreams that never happened because people didn't chase those and take those risks and, and take a chance. And so I don't want to be that person. I think even more to the present is that, you know, it it really gives you meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, Will Smith, uh, I'm going to butcher the quote. So I'll just give the main idea of it where he, where he talks about really like the difference between, you know, uh, he uses the word depression. You can use whatever word, you want, but like really the, the difference between depression and joy is that, you know, when you, when you wake up in the morning and you know that you're going to have um, like a purpose that like what you do is going to benefit someone else's life, then that is like what really brings you real joy. I love that. I love that. And Simon Sinek also, you know, start with why he talks about it for organizations, but on a personal level, when you know your why and why you're getting out of bed in the morning and why you do what you do and um, you know, and Steve Harvey talks about identifying your gift. You know, I think you found a gift in the world doing what you're doing in this platform, in this space. You know, you're having an impact on people uh, just having conversations with them, not only with the people you're talking to, but the people watching the show right now. And so I think that's incredible in the book that you have as well. I think that these are huge pieces. And so when you can identify your space and your gift, um, then I think that's, that's super important. That's your why. You know, why are you here? Why, why do I wake up in the morning? Why, why am I put on this earth? And every day I wake up, uh, as Steve Harvey says, then that means the, the good Lord ain't good, done with me yet. So I got to keep doing what I'm doing and keep driving forward. Yeah. And I think too, that things, at least for me, like, you know, like, like awards and, and accolades and, you know, I guess even currently like you know, views and, and subscriptions, like they, they don't really matter so much because, you know, I get to have what I feel is like such a meaning, meaningful conversation with, with yourself and, and the other guests. Like it, it feels really rewarding and, and so cool too. When I, when I mentioned, 
you know, when I mentioned what I think people's superpowers are and they, they, they light up, it's like, whoa, like, you know, I, I made maybe a, a tiny bit of, of a little difference that could have infinite, you know, butterfly effect ripples. Um, so I, I think it's, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I agree. And so I'm going to butcher this quote, but um, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln said it best, I think, when he's talked about that it's not the wins that he's seeking. It's that, you know, people see his light, light being his good. And, you know, I, I think when we're younger, especially, you know, in middle school, high school, I was a wrestler. I was racking up medals and trophies. That's what I wanted. I wanted to put those on my wall, you know, but now in my 40s now, my 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 impact and my wins are based on how many people I help. And so, you know, those awards and accolades, they come, yes, but, and they're part of it. And, and you have to be gracious and accept it. I know people are like, well, I don't want it, but you kind of, those people identified you, um, you reaching out to me about this. I'm so grateful for you reaching out to me and, and seeing this in me, because if you're grateful for that, then, you know, your impact can be so much bigger. And so now I have a platform to talk about what I'm passionate about, which could also have an impact on somebody. So, you know, why wouldn't I want, you know, those things to, to be, and as you know, uh, I know in your book, uh, as an author, you list that you were an award-winning teacher and game designer. I'm sure that, you know, you're very humble about that, but that also makes somebody buy your book and pick it up. And that, that impact, them reading it is the impact. It's not the award, but it opens the door for more opportunities, if that makes sense, to, to help other people. And when that's your driving force, not the awards itself, success and, and all those things will come and the impact you have on people is going to be so great. Yeah. So what 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 was really interesting to me um, about my story too is that so for when I was doing video games, I was I was just winning so many awards and getting all these accolades and all these all these opportunities, and um, I found for me personally that it was nothing compared to just helping my next door neighbor Grace. Yeah. Um, you know, get, get a basket, you know, get, giving the basketball and the basketball hoop, like what, cause she was really frustrated trying to, trying to shoot it, get it in. And I was like, come on, Grace, like you, you can do it. And she finally made it in. And I was like this, like being able to have meaning for another person, um, or to another person is just so incredibly rewarding. Um, and I'm sure you feel that way too, with, with all the people that you get to help. It's like, wow, like my life has, has real meaning. And like the awards are cool, but, um, you know, for me personally, um, it's, it's nothing compared to, uh, you know, seeing, seeing a kid, you know, that I've helped train throw a Frisbee, like throw the Frisbee, like really well, or, um, you know, I used to coach soccer. And, um, when I, when I taught the kids how to do something in practice, and then I saw them use it during the game, you know, it's just like, it was like the coolest feeling in the world. Um, but because I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say too is that um, maybe it's like the way that our society has conditioned us, our way we've been raised, or all the above. Um, but I think we're kind of pushed to to seek success, and that you know try to seek these awards or or making a ton of money, or you know like all these things that seem like they'll give us some kind of meaning. But um, I personally found that they don't. Um, and that, you know, just, just helping a kid or, or even simply even um, smiling to somebody and, you know, saying hi and, and brightening their day, especially when it looks like they're down in the dumps, you know, I mean, I'll take that over, you know, a, a million awards. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. my. I agree. And I have the same philosophy, which is kind of how we met. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So maybe we should even start getting into the superpowers. It's kind of funny because sure. usually usually I get into them um, kind of quickly, but this has been so interesting. Um, I really enjoy talking to you and getting your, your perspective on things. Um, but so uh, I think the first superpower that we should talk about um, of yours is definitely compassion. And um, I'm trying to remember exactly what Facebook group it was that we met in, but I think it was, it was probably a, a writing group. And I think I was probably asking for help about something or, or actually, I think you were helping somebody. Um, I think they were trying to figure out how to visit schools. Is that, is that what it was? 
Yeah, so we belong to probably a couple of different author groups because I also wrote a book on leadership for Masonic Lodges. And, um, and, I, and I was in that group trying to learn and, and I happened to see someone post a question about, you know, having a book similar to yours, which is for kids, and then how can I get into schools and um, I had posted um, that, you know, they needed to look at campus improvement plans and um, know what kind of grants the schools has and, and, and approach their proposal from that aspect, especially if they're looking to get paid um, or for them to buy their books. And because a lot, a lot of the misconceptions are that the schools don't have money, um, when in reality we have, you know, money that's earmarked for certain things. And so I posted that they, they need to make sure if, if the school's targeting on social emotional learning or community engagement, you know, you can tap into fu federal funds to help pay for those things and just targeting that aspect of it. Yeah, so I think what happened then too is I just commented on your on your post, just, you know, asking for additional advice. And uh, um, I think you're probably just like, yeah, let's let's have a, a Zoom conversation about it yeah. or, you know, some, somehow we got to a Zoom conversation. And the fact that you were willing to go so out of your way for a complete stranger, um, that really meant a lot to me. And you even let me record it so that I could rewatch it. And you really took your time um, to, to help me and, and to really lay things out. And, uh, and not only that, but even after we had that conversation, you, know, you were sending me over like Steve Harvey videos and, and other inspirational yeah. videos. <laughs> and um, you're sending me a, a Facebook groups to check out. And the fact that you are able, so that, that's one of the biggest reasons why, why I want to have you on the show, because I think that someone that is willing to do that for, for another human being is, is someone special. And, um, you know, that's really something that, that I think should be encouraged, um, you know, as, um, as being a superhero, because then too, um, you know, all my, when I go out and I'm successful, you know, you're a part of that success, you know, and hopefully I'm able to give back to you as well. And, you know, we, we can just help grow each other so much more. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And, and I did enjoy it. And, you know, I didn't think much of it. It was just trying to, you know, share knowledge that I had. Um, and I think that a lot of that philosophy we discussed about helping other people and helping them grow, it benefits me too, in a sense, and, and you may not realize it, um, and I don't fully understand it myself, but, you know, the golden rule, do unto others as, as you have them do unto you, right? So by me helping you, I, I've received help, you know, in, in a sense. And um, when we spoke last time, I was struggling to get my first superintendent job, and I had applied to 47 different districts. And now here I am in my, my role, and then coming up here, where are we going to live? I had no idea where we're going to live. And the house I'm in now um, is almost twice the size of the house I had in, in San Antonio. And I'm paying $200 less a month for it because a community member came in to, and said, you know, would your superintendent like to rent this house? Um, and that he was helping me and, and he didn't have to rent it to me for the cost that he rented it to me for. And so, you know, it comes back to you and in, in twofold. And I firmly believe that. And I think that sometimes people get impatient and like, well, bad things always happen to me. Why am I going to help somebody else? But in reality, you got to start helping other people first and being a good person first. And then it'll start coming back to you. Um, I, I firmly believe that. So, yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree. And um, I, I like to say that, um, like, so I really believe in the idea of, of karma. And I think that even if you don't believe in karma at a spiritual le level, that I think it, it really works at a psychological level, because, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're good to people, then people are going to be, you know, generally excited to help you back. But like, if you're not good to people, then people aren't really going to be so excited to, yeah. to help you back. So, it, you know, it just, I think, it, I think it works really well. And I mean, there's just, so many rewards to, to helping people and um and when it comes to helping people it like it doesn't need to be much you know it, it doesn't need to be you know you don't have to like you know go and do their dishes or right. you know like like pay off all, all their debt or you know yeah. it doesn't have to be something that's like crazy you just going back to the saying hi to people or or wishing someone a good day or if you have some kind of knowledge or you know taking five minutes to to answer someone's question on Facebook that's struggling with something. Um, 
I found too, actually one of my friends, um, he, I didn't even realize that he was actually going through kind of, kind of a rough time. And he told me just the fact that I would comment, comment on his, on his posts that, you know, instead of just liking it or whatever, that that actually really made a, a big difference to him. Just that I, I would go out of my way a little bit to say something to him. And um, I seen that was actually like really, really important to him. If, if I remember correctly, like that was uh, like a vast um, impact. And, um, you know, for me, just on my end, you know, it's like what, like, you know, five to 10 seconds to just be like, blah, 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 oh, like, you know, this picture is great, like beautiful shot. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not writing anything that's, you know, particularly profound or, or anything, you know, it's, um, so yeah, I think just a little bit can just go such a long way. Yeah, you know, you bring up such a great point, especially for your younger viewers about social media and that platform. I, I see social media being used for such negative things um, to the point where, you know, I've left groups because of how negative it can get but we can help people through that. And even Facebook has a platform within it to where you can sign up to be a mentor. And, and part of that agreement is you can't charge people. Um, but my wife has done that and helped, you know, new teachers with, you know, navigating, you know, lesson planning and to navigate like teachers pay teachers and what's aligned to our standards and those type of things. You know, it, you, the, it, whatever you're an expert in, take some time, you know, almost like a lawyer doing pro bono work, take some time to help a person out. And when you see someone struggling like that, you know, definitely jump in if you can give some advice or jump on a Zoom call for an hour. And, you know, you never know what kind of friends you're going to make that way, you know? Yeah, I, I love that. One thing that I've come to realize, too, is that we oftentimes well, do have superpowers and also, you know, super knowledge or, or however we want to word it or, you know, knowledge that other people don't have that to us, you know, becomes kind of second nature. And because um, I know some things that, that I'm involved in, you know, like uh, like web design and, and mm -hmm. SEO, uh, like things that, that just, you know, are kind of um, seem obvious to me. Other yeah. people, they're like, what, like, what, like, you know, what's, what's SEO? And, um, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. uh, sometimes it even just, it begins with that. And, you know, I, it's, it's easy to forget how much we actually can give to other people and how much we actually do have. Yeah, 100% agree. And it goes back, it's all full circle. It goes back to what you said about, you know, being, you become the person of the most people you hang out with and the, the books you read as well. I mean, you know, if you, if you've acquired this knowledge, then, then share it with the world, you know, there's somebody out there that needs it at that point in time. Absolutely. I, I, I like that a lot. And I think it's so cool that, that your wife is, is mentoring teachers yeah. and especially with, with lesson plans, because for, for anyone that's been a teacher lesson plans can be very very difficult well and, and part of that is because teachers they're they're great at delivering content uh, content but teachers were never trained to be curriculum designers or you know to design to to do those type of things and so when you're lesson planning and piecing it all together it's not always easy and you know it's not as easy as reading straight from the book anymore the textbook it's it, you got to pull in several different resources to support it. And then you got the, the state standards in every state to, to make sure that it's aligned to that. Otherwise your students aren't successful. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I'm, I'm very excited that, um, well, I, I also, I did it strategically that when I taught, I taught computer science yeah. and I taught media so that I was, I didn't have to deal with- No standards. Know. Yeah, well, so- <laughs> There, there were some, especially for, for media, um, but it was significantly more loose. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, could, I could really, like basically anything that I wanted to do, I, I could basically yeah. do. Um, you know, I, I could kind of, I, I could kind of like fit it. I could, I could squeeze it, be like, uh, well, the standard like pretty much matches what I, this idea. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's not easy. So your wife really is a superhero, I'm sure, to, yeah. to a lot of teachers. She's a superhero every day and to me and to, to her, the kids and staff as well. So for sure. Awesome. So um, what, what does your wife do? Uh, well, actually, she now works for our district. Um, in her previous role, she was the STEM specialist for 
region 13, which supported 60 school districts, but um, moving up here, it's a lot smaller. There's only um, a few school districts in, in the region eight area um, and in a lot of rural towns. So we, again, blessed and lucked out. So, you know, after the teacher contract um, deadline to resign had expired, we were awarded a grant um, here in our district of, of 1.3 million for the next five years to support after school programs for kids, um, which is really focused on the whole child, giving them an activity like archery, culinary, those type of things. But then that's half of it. But then the other half of it is um, remediation for math and reading. And so because of COVID, there's obviously some gaps. And so she's the program coordinator for that. So she hires the teachers and um, she's wrote the lessons already. And um, she's identifying different activities for them to do for the whole child to support them. Um, and this is going to be, uh, I believe, second grade through eighth grade. And so that begins August 30th, but she's already in full swing planning that and um, supporting that. So she's almost like a principal for the after school program and helping our students in DCAB ISD grow um, and, and improve and the whole child as a whole. So, so one thing that, that I, I really notice just watching you talk is that there's so much um, compassion. I know I, meant, I mentioned compassion, um, but like warmth and just, um, you, know, you can really tell that you care about your the district you know all, all the people within the district like you're um just even like going back to the lincoln quote like it's it's really easy to see that you are a light to everyone that you are around and um i'm very excited that you're in your superintendent role so that more people can can hopefully see it I, I appreciate that. Can I tell a quick story Absolutely. about that a little bit? And, and this this impacted my life um, a, a few years ago. Well, it was a long time. I was about I was 23 and um, I was going through um, actually I was going through catechism uh, at Catholic Church um, and going to classes and stuff. And, and I, I was going to become baptized and um, receive my first communion. And there was an older lady who approached me and, and I was struggling at the time. Um, you know, I was trying to figure out who I was as a person, even, it, it, you know, us adults sometimes don't have it all figured out. And this older lady approached me and she said something similar to what you just said. Um, but I didn't really have my finger on a time, but she, she said, um, you know, I, I listen to you talk in the classes. I see how you interact with people and you're going to do great things. Um, and you're going to have an impact on people's lives. I was not a teacher at that time. Uh, actually, I think I was working as a store manager at Hollywood Video um, or Blockbuster, somewhere along those lines. And that impacted me. And I think that goes back to what you say in your book about to kids is, you know, telling people what you just said, just a perfect stranger or someone you barely know can have such an impact. And for me, I'll never forget that experience and how I felt after that. And it drove me because then anytime I make a decision, I think about that lady and say, you know, is this what she sees? Is this, you know, and I barely knew her. And so, um, you know, I, I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate her saying that. And I think that people can learn from that. You need to tell people those things. And, and even people who are super successful are struggling. They're just people and they need to hear it sometimes too. You said so many points that, that I want to touch on, um, and I'm, I'm going to try not to go um, too long because I could talk a, a really long time about, um, about that. You mean that that's a really good story, and I think it's an example, too, of, of how people can see different angles that, that um, you know, we don't see or, you know, things about, our, things about it ourselves. And so for me personally, one thing that, that I had trouble with was giving compliments. And, uh, um, and uh, I, I realized that people are really quick, well, not, not everyone, but you know, a lot of people are, are really quick to, if they have a negative thought about somebody, like say that negative thought or, or say something mean, like, like people are really quick generally to, maybe not generally, but oftentimes you know, really quick to say something mean or say something judgmental or, you know what I mean? Something like we're, we're, we're quick to say something negative. Um, and I was like, I want to be, quick to say something positive, you know, like if I, if, if I encounter something 
you know, nice about someone or like a, a positive quality to, to, to say that, to be quick to mention that and, you know, get that out there. And um, so that's why um, sometimes people tell me that, you know, like, wow, like you, you give a lot of compliments, but every time that I say that it's like, it's really sincere and it's, and it's actually really about, it's not like, oh, like, wow, like, you know, great hair. Or, you know what I mean? It's not like, a, um, like, I'm not just, I'm not throwing out compliments to just throw out compliments. It's because right. um, I've realized, like, you know, someone has, has done something or there's been a re realization that, um, you know, like they did something special and that I, I want to bring that to light. Yeah, I agree too. I, I try to do the same thing as well. Um, because it has such an impact on people. A huge, a huge impact. <laughs> and it's nice too, like when you when you give someone a compliment. Um, and you know, sometimes you see, like I'm sure that lady saw when she gave that compliment that, you know, like it, it turns a light bulb on, like, whoa, yeah, like I didn't realize that. And then also too, like when you see that the other person happier because of the compliment, um, you know, that's really rewarding too. So there's there's just so much to it. And I have to say, she gave me that compliment in a parking lot as I'm about to open my, my car and get in my car and leave for the night. It, it wasn't in a formal setting. It wasn't in front of other people. So it doesn't have to, there's, I guess what I'm saying is there's no right time to do that. You know, you just, when you feel, when you feel it, say it. If it feels yeah, right, it. say it. Yeah, I agree. And then also on, on, on the flip side, um, you know, I, I found for me personally, like if, if I've said something mean to somebody, you yeah. know, it actually makes me feel bad. Like it doesn't, it doesn't actually make me feel better. Like maybe, maybe it, it makes me feel like higher and mightier in, in the moment, but it's very temporary. And, um, you know, and then I feel bad, you know, then I feel like so guilty, um, that, that I, that I said something mean to somebody and it's, it kind of, um, it almost grows too. I, I guess like, like both sides grow, like where like you say something nice to someone and yeah. her, and you know, you, it, it kind of like grows in your memory of, you know, that, that experience grows um, mm -hmm. as I'm sure that that experience has with that, with that lady. And, yeah. you know, the exact same, if, if I said something mean to somebody, you know, that, that grows in my memory and um, you know, it just gets worse and worse and you just feel guiltier and guiltier. And, you know, um, so I don't know. I just thought that was, it just popped in my brain. I thought that was kind of interesting. No, you're right. And it's just like when positive things come back around to you, negative things come back around too. So uh, I would highly suggest that if a lot of negative things are happening to you, take a look at yourself and see what you're doing. Take a look in the mirror and see what you're doing, because whatever you're doing is probably, you know, the result of those negative things coming to you. I, I agree. And I think being honest with yourself and really taking a hard look at yourself uh, is probably one of the hardest things that you can possibly do. Yes. Um, but then also, you know, sometimes it's really helpful to just, as we've mentioned before, just ask people for their advice and, you know, see if, if you can get some good constructive criticism. Yeah. And be open to it. Be open to the feedback. I mean, whatever comes at you, <laughs> be open to yeah. what they say and reflect on it and, and, and move forward. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. We, you know, it, it, it's kind of really cool. Uh, like this interview, I'm, I'm realizing that we're like, we're really like circling back to a lot of, a lot of key points. And um, so it just, it's really interesting how much just like these, these little things really do impact things on such a major scale. Um, almost like really almost kind of like a, a global scale, like, um, cause just, just with how things ripple out, um, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, if, if I'm, if I'm bad to you, then, you know, you start being bad to other people and, um, you know, and then that, and then that ripples versus like, if we're good to people, then, then that ripples out. Um, I don't know, just super interesting. Um, you, you, you have me thinking ab about a lot of stuff, which, which I very much appreciate. <laughs> and, um, and, and also I don't want to miss the point too, that you made about the importance of being open-minded and the ability yeah. to receive constructive criticism. Now you don't need to accept criticism because if someone just, you know, rails on you and it's, it's not useful advice, then, you know, it's probably something wrong with them, but constructive criticism, 
Um, my, my, my motto is that constructive criticism is more valuable than gold because it helps you earn more gold. Because if, if you tell me something about myself that, that I didn't realize or, or help me improve a product or, or whatever, or something that I'm working on, um, you know, you help me see an angle that I didn't see, you know, and I can make that better, you know, that's, that can help me actually earn more money or meaning or, or, or whatever. Yeah, I agree. And don't take it personal. And what I mean by that is, you know, I was on a, I listen to audiobooks while I'm mowing the lawn. I'm going to ride the lawn more this morning. And I was listening to Dr. Brene Brown, Dare to Lead, the book. And she says in that book, um, you know, whoever your critics are, if they're not in the trenches with you. So, for example, if they're not educators and they're not, you know, I'll OK, I'll I'll, I'll take the criticism, but it, it's going to determine how much it's going to impact me based on how much you're in the trenches with me. If you're willing to get in there with me and you're doing the work, um, then I'll take constructive feedback from you. And, and this goes back to when I was a principal. I you know, as a principal on, on up, you're going to get blasted sometimes on social media by parents and community leaders. Um, and you have to take that with a grain of salt, you know, um, but you meet with who you can and you take what you can, but sometimes some of the, the criticism is unjust and, you know, you got to face that and move forward. And, um, you know, so along with what you said about, and, and make sure you, you're careful on who you ask feedback from, make sure it's somebody who's going to be honest with you, and make sure it's somebody who's got their heart in the right place about the care about you. Um, and, and then you can take it and, and move forward, forward and learn from it. And it's going to impact so many more people that way. Yeah. I mean, for me, the, the real filter that I use is, is it useful? Yeah, I agree. And I guess too, well, I don't know if I've done this so much, but, um, if, if someone does come back with, with kind of harsh feedback, you know, trying to understand, you know, is there some, is there some truth to this? Like, is, is there something yeah. that, that like, is, is there some way that, that I'm presenting myself in, in not a way that, that I want to, um, or is this, you know, something that is an issue with them or a combination of both. And um, just I think when you can separate yourself from, from the criticism a little bit and, and, and look at things objectively, that it can help a long way. Um, yeah, that, oh, that can go a long way. Um, it's, it's just trying, trying to keep yourself distance from those emotions, which it can I'll be it super, yeah. yeah, just like you said, super difficult. Um, but yeah. And my, fil my filter for that is if I'm getting it from more than one place, it's probably true. You know, <laughs> if it's one person, you know, and, but once you start getting two, three, four people, all right, I need to look in the mirror and see what's going on and, and take a step back. So, and, and again, don't take it personal. It's hard sometimes because you feel like you're being attacked, but um, in a sense, you know, it, it's their opinion and their perception and, you know, and their perception is their reality. And you have to understand that. And like you said, take from it what you can and just move forward. And it's, and it's also an opportunity for us to potentially move to the next level. Yes. Yes, 100%. And if one person's seeing it, there is a good chance other people are going to see it too. And so you may need to make adjustments or head it off at the pass so that, you know, it doesn't spread into something negative. Yeah. So you made me think too that, um, like maybe even if, 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 if a lot of people are seeing that there's, you know, something not so great about us or that, that, that we're doing, um, if we can actually identify that in ourselves, we can actually probably have a better relationship with ourselves because if we're, if we're irking, if we're irking other people, like in this certain way, we're, we're probably actually irking ourselves too, you know, or, 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 or it's like a, at the very least, probably a source of, of unhappiness for, for ourselves as well. Um, yeah. So it just, it kind of really <laughs> makes a lot of people happier. Um, so yeah. I, and I think, I think really being able to to do that really is a superpower in itself because um, it's not easy. Like the whole, just the whole idea of, of being honest with yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not at all. And, and that goes back to, I think that is a superpower, being able to reflect um, and be honest with yourself and then grow from it and move on from it. Uh, that it's hard. It's one of the hardest things there is. And sometimes you, you need an outside person to, to pinpoint it for you. Just like you need an outside person to pinpoint your superpower sometimes. And so I, I, I think that we, we've nailed this point 
really well and <laughs> I love it. And I want to just mention one thing real quick. I was, I was watching um, Jay Krishnamurti today and um, he was talking about how, you know, a lot of our suffering or our conflict, like, you know, even like within us is when, um, is when there's a difference between what is and what we think it should be. Yeah. And I thought that was like, so it's kind not, of mind blowing. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it just goes back to that being honest with, with ourselves of like, this is actually like the reality of the situation. Like, like maybe we like want to think that like, you know, it's this person's fault, you know, or, or like things are this way or whatever, but in reality, like this is actually how it is, you know, like we, you know, time, time to work on, on ourself and, uh, um, you know what I mean? Or, or, um, yeah. <laughs> 100%. If you want an organization to grow, a school to get better, a classroom to get better, um, have people work on themselves first, and that will move it forward. And your book does that. Your book does that for kids, and I think it helps classrooms. Um, but I think that when there's conflict and there's problems and issues, when individuals look at themselves first and they can improve themselves, then the organization, the community, the world becomes a better place. And that's really where it all starts too, because that's ultimately the only thing that we have control over is, is ourselves and our, and our attitudes. 100% agree. Yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. I, I really like this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, really cool. it's like, it's, it's so funny to me how, you know, we've, we've barely, <laughs> barely covered, you know, any of the, even, uh, you know, parts of the show, but, um, but that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to, to let things, um, evolve how they do. And, uh, so I, I do want to mention at least one more of your superpowers and, um, um, I, I love the fact that you're so tenacious as well with how you, um, you know, you realize that you had a dream and you applied 72 times. Yeah. 70, well, 73. It was Maybe. 47, 47 that I tracked. I know there was more and I received two interviews. Um, one was with DCAB and one was with, with another small school district. And um, I was actually named the final two for that one too, um, the other school district, but I declined it because the interview for the second one was going to be the, 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 the same date as my first interview for DCAB. And I just felt better about DCAB. It was a, you know, really, I felt the community fitted a little, a little bit better for what I was looking for. Um, but it was hard. It was, it was extremely hard, but a lot of people, a lot of friends and family supported me. And I will tell you, I wanted to quit several times. I wanted to, um, but my family and my friends, they pushed me because they knew they, they saw something in me. They knew that they felt like I would be great at being a superintendent. Um, now we're only 60 days in, you know, time will tell, but I'm super excited to be here and I'm loving every day and I love my job. I love the kids here. I love the community. I love my staff. I couldn't be in a better situation. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I'm hoping to be here for a long time because um, really moving sucks, first of all. That's no fun. But, you know, I, I like it a lot. I like being here. So I am, I am so excited for your community that they get to have you in that spot. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, I love it. I, I'm the one who's blessed more so than I think they are because what, what the impact it's having on me and my family. Um, in fact, you know, you would think being a superintendent, I'd be more stressed, less stressed. My, my wife and I both have said being here, we feel a lot less stressed than we did in the big city. Um, just country life is, is great and it's treating us well. Well, I, I think they, I think they found the, the perfect guy for the job. And yes, um, it's, it's just, it, it's so nice to see, um, you know, someone that really cares about other people, um, you know, in, in, in such, in such a big role. Um, yeah. Cause I, I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen it, but for me, you know, in the education system, unfortunately, some people are not really, I guess it's probably the same for every job, but, um, you know, in education that they're, that they're kind of, they're not really where they should be and that they're not really enjoying their experience there. And then it kind of, you know, ripples out negatively. Um, but so seeing someone that is as caring as you and, and compassionate 
um, and good natured, um, you know, in, in such a large role, like I'm, I'm just so excited about like that, that impact and, you know, and all that growth that it, that's going to happen for, for everybody. I appreciate that. And I have great people that work under me. So I know that we're going to do great things and we have great kids and a great community that's very supportive. Um, and I'm a firm believer, like you just said, and I think in any role that sometimes people aren't a great fit for an organization. And sometimes an organization isn't a great fit for a person. And part of that parenting piece as a leader is helping people understand that if you're not a good fit here, or this, this isn't a good fit for you, then how can I help you find your fit so that you're successful? You know, I guess that really goes back to the whole honesty bit too. Yeah. You know, like the, like the people that are, um, you know, keeping themselves in roles that they're not happy with, um, you know, that, that they're not necessarily being honest with themselves. Yeah. That's, that's that reflection piece. You know, what is it that I want? What's my why? If this isn't my why every day, then how can I find it? Yeah. Yeah. What's really interesting too, is that, you know, maybe you have someone that is say, you know, like, not, not super happy as, as a teacher, but, you know, maybe have them do a, another role that's similar, like, um, I don't know, being a superintendent or, or a principal or something, yeah. you know, that, that's like more aligned to their, their way of working, you know, that could completely flip things, but it's like that, the whole being honest with yourself and really realizing like, Hey, like, you know, I'm doing this job, you know, I'm not happy, you know, it's, it's time to do something about it. Yep. And, and sometimes we as leaders or as, as people, as individuals, as friends, as colleagues, we have to point that out for the person. And, and I feel like we're doing an injustice for those people when we don't point it out to them and, and help them get to where they need to be. It's, it's tough to be honest. Um, it it's, it's tough to be honest to other people. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with people that are able to be honest with other people, but like, but word things in a way that, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's thanking like, you for it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like it's like really diplomatic, you know, yeah. like like or you know, basically like telling someone that sometimes I mean, even that like you know that maybe like you're not like that great at, at a job or whatever, you know, like like stuff that would normally be kind of an ego blow to most people, but the way that they that they word it and the angle that they come in, it's it's just like so supportive, and they're like, and the person's like, oh yeah, that's you know, I think you're right. <laughs> you know, it's just, <laughs> like it's just like it. Like those kind of people, because I am I am not that way. I, I wish I could be. Um, I'm a little bit more uh, blunt. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. People, yeah. thankfully, people tell me that um, that the way that I say it, like it doesn't that it's not really offensive and that, um, you know, they, they, they appreciate it. Not, not everyone always appreciates it. <laughs> um, that's for sure. But, you know, uh, um, you know, people are, are at their different levels and, and that's fine. And I'm sure I could do a better job of, of delivering it. Um, but um, you know. it's empathy. It's 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 how it's if you're empathetic and, and you understand that, hey, you know, I really do care and I want you to be successful. Right. You know, and it, it comes a point where you you know, that's, that's gone. You know, you've tried so many times it's gone, but right. I think if you're empathetic about it, but also you have to build the bank, right? So you build a bank with positive things, affirmations, great things. So when you have to withdraw, because you're going to provide some sort of um, constructive criticism or feedback, then it goes, it, it's an easier pill to swallow when you have, you know, those, the, you built that relationship and it's all about relationships. It's all about building relationships. And like you said, just, it starts with high and then from there it grows. I completely agree. And uh, yeah, just even banking on the, the high thing, I know I go back to it a lot. I've made so many friendships from just simply saying hi to people. Yeah. I j just going for walks and I'll say hi to people and it just lead to a conversation. And because it, it's basically like opening up the door for, for a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And you never know what's going to come out of it. You know, how you're going to grow from it or what, you know, this is awesome. Like I, I never would have thought that day, just, you know, saying, Hey, let's jump on a zoom that it would turn into this. <laughs> I never yeah. thought that, you know, me posting a, a Facebook comment, <laughs> you know, <laughs> would, would, yeah. I mean, imagine, imagine if you had never posted, you know, even just trying to help that guy out. Right. You know what I mean, it's, it's, it's just so interesting. Or, or the person that created that group hadn't created yeah. that group to help out writers, you know, yeah. it's just, it's really interesting how, you know, it, it's just really built on like a lot of stones of, of people helping each other. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's crazy. And I do that all, every day in my life. I, I've been in positions where I've moved and, you know, I was a principal on a really struggling campus. But what came out of that was two really important friendships that I have now. They're lifelong friends of mine and, and they've helped me so much. And, and I feel like I impacted the kids while I was there, but I was only there for two years. Um, but that being said, I feel like I, I look at every situation and try to figure out, you know, why am I here and what's the what's the impact? But at the same time, I don't question it because when you question it, then you miss it. So you got to kind of just go with the flow and, and understand that something's happening for a reason, like that post, you know, and that that Facebook group. But, you know, it, it, there's a reason behind everything. Absolutely. And and you never really realize the, the, the impact that you've had on other people. Like even if even if you just cross their path, you know, like for, for a short period of time, you know, even those kids that um, mm -hmm you know, that, that you only worked with for, for, for two years, you know, you could, um, like, you could still be, um, like a positive impact to them, like in their mind, like they might think back to you and, you know, the, um, you know, the warmth and light that you brought and, you know, and, and have it be able to still affect their everyday life. Yeah. And so I, I was thinking about that too, um, for myself, cause there's, um, there's some kids that, you know, I feel like I had like, I was able to have a good impact on, and then, you know, it kind of bummed me out a little bit that, that I don't get to see them so much anymore, but I was thinking that it's, it's almost kind of like, a, um, like, like the force ghosts in, um, in star Wars where yeah. it's like, you know, even though like, I'm not around with them, yeah, um, you're there. You know, it's yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know, I was, I was still like hanging out and, and, and almost kind of like that idea of, uh, um, you know, when Obi-Wan Kenobi gets taken out, you know, hopefully this isn't a spoiler for anybody, you know, he's yeah. like, he's like, uh, he's like, you know, if, 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 if you, if, if you kill me, then you'll actually make me stronger. And, yep. um, um, just that, that idea that, um, you know, he was able to go from just like being a human being to like a concept that is like ever present with Luke, you know? Um, so yep. it's, it was actually like more, more powerful um because um i'm probably not explaining this that well because instead of like having to ha like have me in person or um you know to gain that it's it's always there like it's like there's always like that concept of me like supporting like the this person my older church lady she's a force ghost in my life i don't remember her name and i can barely to be honest i can barely re remember her face but I, I, I it's 20 years later and i'm still talking about it and it was a moment that she impacted me i can't remember what she said in those meetings but i remember that less than a minute conversation and you know i you know like you said i was on a campus for two years and who knows what kind of moments how many moments i had in that two years but i also believe that you know what i went through there prepared me for my job today so some way, somehow, something influenced me then and prepared me for today. And, you know, whether it's negative or positive, it's going to prepare you for your future. You just got to look at it and find that strength and tap into it as a superpower, I think, you know? It, you know, I like that, that, that concept of thinking about it as superpowers. And Force Ghost, I love that. I feel like that's a book. Force Ghost, what are your Force Ghosts? I can picture the, <laughs> the, the cover right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was just something that that I was thinking about not too long ago. And I think it's, um, I, th I think you're right. I think, I think it should get explored more um, because for me, it's, it's, you know, my grandmother and yeah. my grandfather. And, uh, it's, it's interesting too, that you said, you know, that like a lot of the things that she said to you, like you don't even remember. And yeah. for me, I, I remember almost nothing of what my grandmother told me um, or said to me but I do remember, um, her care for me. You know what I mean? I, I do remember like the feeling that she, um, that she gave me. And so it makes me think that that's even oftentimes more important than what you say. And, mm -hmm. um, and I guess mm -hmm. it goes to, to the whole idea that I think is really important of, you know, if, if you just show a kid or, or even an adult that you're in their corner, even if you do no work, you don't have to do any work. You just show that you care about their success um, you know, they'll not remember you, but that can completely change their life. That's powerful because I had that kind of relationship with my grandfather who was retired military 35 years. Um, and, you know, his own kids will tell you that they didn't have that relationship with him. 
Um, but with me being a grandchild, it was a different type of relationship. And um, like you said, I remember the love I felt and the compassion from him, which has transitioned into my love and compassion for my own kids and my students and, and the people I meet. And yeah, that's powerful. I agree 100%. Yeah, you've, I, I think we've, I think we've uncovered a lot of really neat things that, yeah. um, you know, I, I actually can't wait to watch this show again. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I feel like I should be taking notes. Um, I'm glad it's recorded because yeah. um, I, I think we've, um, I, I think we've hit on a lot of really interesting points. Yeah, I, and I, I agree. And I think we could probably go on for another hour. <laughs> our, our viewers probably wouldn't like that though. Your viewers. <laughs> Yeah, my 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 plan of 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 keeping the podcast to like ten to twenty minutes, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's that that has been a failure, but um, a good failure, you know. It's uh, um, I I feel like that if I didn't give give the space to have these kind of conversations, that so much would be missed, and I I think that's the correct assessment because um, I've you know just even in this conversation, um, I've learned so much. Um, I do want to touch on. Uh, one of your superpowers, um, another one of your superpowers that um, should hopefully probably be obvious to people already. But um, I think just the fact that you care so much about other people's success, um, yeah. I just I think that's so important and so rewarding. And I guess it just ties into what we're just talking about too. Yeah, I agree. Um you know, and I don't, I don't know where to pinpoint it from. I, I guess, like you said, I just feel good when I help people and um, I know how I feel when I'm successful. So, you know, I just, I want to help people grow. And, um, you know, I, I like it again, like talking about the accolades and things like that. I see success as an impact on another person, you know, and I think that by as a superintendent, if I can help my principals be successful, they're going to help their teachers be successful, which in turn is going to have a larger impact on kids. As a teacher and a coach, I only had a control of a small impact in my classroom, you know, and it was roughly about 115 kids, um, you know, and then on my wrestling team, I had about maybe 30 or 40. But, but when I can be a coach for a principal for several campuses that coaches hundreds of teachers that has impacts on thousands of kids, um, the impact is so much greater. And you said something earlier that kind of stuck in my head was, you know, the, the amount of impact and things like that. Some people might say, well, actually, I do know for a fact, there's several people who are waiting for their first superintendent job, but they're waiting for a huge district because they think that I need a big district to have a bigger impact. But the reality is I'm in a small district of, of almost, we're, we're a nickel shy of 800 kids. So 795 kids right now. And the impact that we can have on those 795 kids could change the world. Could be just one kid. I don't know. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of, of that game, you know, um, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like the, the six degrees to, to Kevin Bacon or something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you, you, you impact five people and then, you know, each of them impacts five people, you know, and it just, it doesn't take long before it's impacting a lot of people. Yeah, I've heard a superintendent when I was going through my PhD classes and, and um, they had a superintendent come talk to us and he said that he defined leader or success based on how large his leadership tree was. So how many people has he grown to become, you know, assistant principals, principals, um, superintendents, assistant superintendents, whatever it might be. And I kind of agree with that assessment. It's almost like a, it's a game in a sense, you know, how many people can I help realize their dreams and become successful? Um, and it's not just an education, but, you know, if I helped you in some way, then I think that that's a, that, that makes me feel good about what I've done. And that goes back to defining my legacy. You know, I may not be the most, I may not be a famous person, but what if I helped the person who, you know, cures cancer, you know, just because we gave them that student, uh, or he or she an excellent education. Wow. I mean, you know, that's, that's a huge impact and you may never see it, but, I think when, when, when you come to that end of the race, you're going to know, you know, what, what you've made me or helped me think of too, is that really at the end of the day, um, it's helping us have, like when we're helping people, it's helping us have existential fulfillment or happiness or 
existential meaning, which I think in, in this day and age, a lot of people are struggling with because um, for, for most people, especially in the United States, you know, their, their basic needs are, are able to be met with, you know, getting clothing and, and food and, and basic housing. But then we have the big existential crisis of, you know, how do we, how do we fill that? And I, I think that a lot of times people fill that in ways that aren't healthy for them. Um, and so when you can actually have like the real meaning of helping people, it just, I think it's, um, I guess just kind of tying everything together. Um, and that's, that's probably its own talk, but, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, I think that's an important point that, um, that I, I just wanted to mention. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I don't want to take up all your day, but I do have, <laughs> I do have, um, two questions for you. And the first one is of course, my favorite part of the show. And uh, that is, I'm curious what superpowers you see myself as having. Yeah, I think that your your superpowers are also, you know, you have empathy and and you also have ability to um, to communicate. And and so I think that, you know, having a platform um, and and communicating with the world about, you know, different people's superpowers. But in a sense, you also have a, 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 the ability to look inside someone and see what is the light inside of them. And I think that when you can pinpoint that and help people realize what that is um, and help them understand what their light is and their gift to the world, um, as Steve Harvey would say, then that's powerful because we spend a large part of our life trying to figure out why we're here and what we're doing. And um, when you can do that for someone else and help coach them to that piece, um, that's huge. And, and that's, that's great. And I think that comes from your experiences as a teacher and your life experiences. So I think you just touched on the whole idea of the existential crisis too, with how, yeah. you know, people like for a lot of people, I mean, myself included are, yeah, what should I do with my life? You know, like, yeah. like this feels, my, my life feels empty. It feels hollow. Um, so this is, this is really, really good stuff. And I appreciate you mentioning that too, with the communication, because for me, I actually see that as a big weakness of mine. Um, I think that I, I could improve a lot. Like, well, just, you know, especially like on my, on my speaking and, mm -hmm. um, and also working on, on, on talking to people more. Um, cause I am, I'm actually very introverted. Um, a lot of people don't, don't believe me, but, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I think that for me, it's, it's more important to put myself out there and, you know, try to have these, these kind of conversations than, you know, be afraid mm -hmm. that I'm introverted and that my speaking isn't as hundred percent as good as, as it could be. And, and I, I figure hopefully each time you know, I could, I can do a little better. Like that's my goal. Just try to hit, not be so bad you know every, every, every time I do it um, it, takes, it takes practice and and you know uh, right. when I first became an administrator I had to speak in front of large crowds and that same mentor I was talking about the principal which he's probably watching this show he'll probably send me a text with how many ums I said during the show but during, <laughs> during some of my speeches uh he would send he would count my ums and then send them to me and he you know you try to get better at it, it takes practice to get there but you know, just some, I think for me, what helps me is no matter who I'm talking to, I could be talking to the president of the United States. They're people, they're human beings. And so when you see everybody as just a human being like me, that's got flaws and has some of the same struggles, then it becomes easy after that. Well, and it's, and it's so fun and, and rewarding. Um, you know, even just like this conversation and, uh, you know, like the previous shows that I've had too, like it has opened my mind in, in ways that I never would have imagined. And because, you know, I, I really wanted to, like when I was starting out, like really try to just highlight the other person and like, you know, really have it kind of be about them. And it's actually revealed so much about myself too, in ways that, that I never would have <laughs> thought of. Like, it's just, um, I mean, I guess it goes back to what we we're talking about. Um, you know, it's, it's just so rewarding on uh, on everyone's end, you know, to to try to help other people and be good to other people and celebrate yeah. other people. 
Yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> okay, I don't want to go. <laughs> I, feel like we, I feel like we could we could go on this for 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 forever, which is which is awesome. Um, but I don't I don't want to keep the, the audience too too long. So um, my last question is, uh, what do you have any tips or, or advice for for any of our budding superheroes? Yeah, uh, learn. Um, you know, we, when you asked about, I saw your other episodes, and you were asking about what they thought their superhero strength was. Um, you know, I, I kind of tapped into Gallup strengths because we did a Gallup test, and my number one strength is learner um, in that piece. And um, so, I consume just about anything I can, whether it's books, audio books, um, you know, podcasts, um, those type of things and talking to people. Um, you know, you, you talked about you being an introvert. My daughter's a, a huge introvert. And I think that you don't know what you're missing if you don't talk to people, um, get to know people, get away from the negative stuff in social media, but, but consume positive things and all that you can learn from people who have been successful and are doing what you want to do. If you want to be a superintendent, then listen to podcasts about successful superintendents. If you want to be, um, you know, a CEO someday, then listen to podcasts about that, but consume those things and read biographies, read biographies about people who have gone through uh, trials and tribulations and came out successful. Um, because I think that doing those type of things, are important than, like you said, surround yourself with OQP, only quality people. I think uh, one really important thing as well is, especially in this day and age, you know, you're talking about like listening, like if you're um, want to be a superintendent, like, you know, checking out the, the those podcasts by other superintendents, mm -hmm. but also you can actually reach out to them and you, yeah. know, you can just ask for, you know, for suggestions or, or you know, ask, yeah. ask them questions or, or maybe even potentially like be on their show. You know, um, like, and, and so this is just to reinforce the point that you're making about the importance of, of connecting and, um, mm -hmm. uh, just to bring back Jay Christian Murdy, but he, he said that, you know, relationships are like the most important thing. And mm -hmm. like really, I think he even said that they could be the, the only thing that's, yeah. um, and so, um, that's, that's really had me thinking, cause especially since being introverted, I, I sometimes tend to isolate myself a little bit and mm -hmm. I'm starting to realize how much that I miss out on by doing that. And yeah, the worst thing they can say is no. And if they say no, then you move on to the next Absolutely. person. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, or not respond to your email or, or whatever. Yeah, that happens it's, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's been more the case for me lately, but you know, that's fine. And just, just like you said, you just move on to the next person yeah. because I mean, you, you never know. Um, I mean, things that have happened to me in my life, like even just with my, with my game stuff, um, you know, just far beyond anything that I would have ever imagined. And, um, and a lot of times it's just like, we're talking about like, like people like to help, you know, cause yep. it gives them meaning. So, um, all right, well, yeah. So, so this has been, this has been great. <laughs> um, is there, are, are there any um, last things that you that you'd like to say to the audience? Um, no, I, I would say just make sure you pick up the book um, for your kids. And even as an adult, it's a good book. I, I read it and I definitely endorse it. But also I would say that, you know, again, just look for quality people and, you know, learn from your experiences and reflect and move forward. And I want to thank you for this opportunity. I learned a lot from it too, and I enjoyed it. And I'm hoping that you have a lot of success with the program in your book. Thank you so much. And, you know, it, it really is such a treat to be able to, to have you on. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, just for so many reasons, but, you know, like being able to thank you too, for, for everything that you've, you've done for me and, and for everyone else, you know, um, and, and to really be able to show the world what you're doing and how great of a human being you are like that, that to me is, is really what it's all about and just so exciting. And um, I'm so glad that you agreed to, to join, um, you know, the, the interview. And uh, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm very grateful for the experience and um, I'm grateful for, for what a fantastic human being you are. Um, so, so really, so thank you so much. Uh, well, you're welcome. And thank you. I appreciate it too. Awesome. Um, well, to the audience, um, I hope you have a great day. 
um, a great every day. And Chris, again, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day and great every day as well. Thank you. You too. All right. Take care. Yes.